Hi guys, Ken here, postcards from Cebu. Uh, so real estate and ownership in the Philippines, owning real estate in the Philippines. Um, what are my thoughts? Well, first of all, um, Vivian and I plan to do exactly that. She wants to have a place of our own uh, in uh, Minglanilla town. Um, and uh, when I retire, uh, in a few years, and we move back to uh, Cebu, uh, we will buy a place, you know, we together, she and I will buy a place. And um, so I'll share some of my thoughts with you on that whole process, because, uh, you know, like, a, like a lot of folks, uh, we tend to in the beginning, especially, we tend to think that things are the same, uh, where we live, everywhere else in the world, and they're not. Um, for instance, in the Philippines, a foreigner cannot own land, um, to the best of my knowledge. Now, any attorneys or real estate professionals uh, out there watching, please drop your uh, thoughts in the comments for me and uh, let us all know. But that is my understanding. Now, there is a, um, uh, a, a provision, uh, a visa called the SRRV, which does allow foreigners, uh, and I don't know if you even need the visa or not, but uh, foreigners can own a condo. Because in the case of a condo, you don't really own the land, you, you just own that space, um, your apartment, if you will. Uh, that's what you own. So you don't really own the land, and that's a way that uh, I guess the uh, uh, Philippine uh, developers are able to get around uh, the law that prevents ownership of foreigners. But in my case, because Vivian and I are married and she's Filipina, um, that's not an issue. We can buy property together because she is a Filipina. A um, couple of things that come to mind. I'm looking at yeah, I'm looking at my notes. Um, a couple of things that come to mind is security. Um, security's a big one. Uh, a lot of a lot of places in the Philippines are organized into what they call compounds, family compounds. It's a security practice. Uh, there are many different family members living in a close proximity to one another. Maybe um, grandma, grandpa own the chunk of land and they build several houses on it for kids and their families. And so in a small area, there are quite a few properties that are occupied by relatives. Um, and that's the family compound. As a matter of fact, Vivian, uh, has two houses in such a compound um, and of course her kids are adult children like mine and her kids live there uh, and will continue to. I mean they'll still they'll stay there. Um, that's why Vivian wants to get a, uh, a new property uh, that's just for us and um, that's something that I also think about is security. Um, something that you want to keep uh, keep in the back of your head um, especially uh, being a foreigner, uh, because most Filipinos, uh, you know, they imagine all foreigners, especially Americans, are rich, and uh, so you become a target just by the fact that you're a foreigner. So, something to keep in mind. Um, another another kind of uh, solution to the security problem is a subdivision. Um, a lot of the new subdivisions that are going up have armed security at the gate. Um, you move, you know, you can uh, move, you can buy a place there, kind of like you do in the U.S. Um, and it, they provide the security for you. So I, I suspect that you pay some kind of uh, fee, community um, fee, kind of like a condo fee. And uh, the neighborhood provides the security. Um, the other thought I have uh, is about the real estate market. And I really don't know much about this. I'm not a real estate agent. Um, like I said, hopefully maybe uh, some Filipino uh, real estate agents will watch the video and chime in comment section below. 
but I'm not sure how liquid the market is there. I mean, you know, here in the U.S., yeah, you can pretty much sell your house within a year or so, six months to a year. You put it on the market and somebody comes and buys it and then you go through the settlement process, blah, blah, blah. And, um, and you're on. I don't know about the, um, in the Philippines, I'm not sure how long that takes. So maybe somebody can chime in with what is the average uh, length of time that a property stays on the market. Uh, it might be quite a while. So with that in mind, uh, of any place that you do buy, plan on staying there for a while. So my recommendation is then before you buy, make sure you know that area. Make sure you know the area. And that's kind of my thoughts too when Vivian and I are talking about uh, buying a place. I'm like, you know, maybe we should rent, you know, if we see if we can rent in that area, in that neighborhood for a while and get to know some of the neighbors and stuff because you may be stuck there for a very long time. Um, it, I don't think the market in the Philippines is quite as liquid as it is in the U.S. So if you don't like the area, um, you know, it may take you a very long time to sell that property. And if you need to sell it to buy another one, then you're really stuck. Okay. So you do really want to know the area before you move in there. Um, fortunately for me, because my wife is Filipina and she's from that area, she knows the area is pretty good. So she can kind of steer us to the right places. Um, but still, I think I would like to experience it for myself, make sure I don't have um, loud neighbors, and I don't think there's anything you can do about the roosters. There, <laughs> there's, there's always going to be a rooster crowing somewhere. Um, so hopefully you're not a very light sleeper. Me, I'm usually, um, I'm usually dead once I go to sleep, so it takes a nuclear explosion to wake me up. But anyway, guys, thanks for watching. Uh, Hit that subscribe button up there. Subscribe to the channel. We'd love to have you. Uh, as always, comments, feel free. Uh, leave a comment below as long as it's appropriate. We'll answer you back. Thanks for watching, guys. Have a good day.